Our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1501. The topic for today is ideal gases. Lesson 103, let us start. Lesson 101 and 102 of this chapter, we've went through how to convert. We went through the ideal gas equation. We also looked at different types of theories that deals with the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. And we also looked at different equations, Boyle's law, we looked at Gay-Lussac law, and Charles law. So in this lesson video, we'll be looking at concepts which are partial pressure, total pressure, mole fraction. Before we do that, the equations that you need to know in order to answer any question based on this particular concept is the most basic equation in stoichiometric calculations or stoichiometry, which is this one. This N stands for number of moles and then it's measured in mole. And then we know that this is the mass in grams of a substance measured in grams and then this is the molar mass of the substance measured in grams per mole you can find this from the periodic table as long as you have a molecular formula of that particular substance then it's very simple to get this so this equation will also be used in this chapter or let me say concepts it's very much important that you know how to use this equation so this is the first basic thing that you need to know in order to understand this particular concept or chapters. The other equation that you need to know is the ideal gas equation, which is PV is equals to NRT. You know that this is pressure, can be in ATM or kilopascals, but I normally prefer ATM. It's a pressure of a gas. And then this is the volume measured in liters or dm cube we know that liters and dm cube they're equivalent and then this is the number of moles of a that particular gas it's measured in moles the very same number of moles of this one then this one is our gas constant if we use our pressure as atm and our volume as liters and then our gas constant will be measured in liter atm kelvin i mean per kelvin per mole so you can see that this si unit for r it actually tells you each and every si unit of the physical quantities we have here you can see atm is for pressure it means our pressure must be in atm and then you can see L. L is for um, our volume must be in liters. And then K is our temperature. It must be in Kelvin. And then mole is the number of moles. It must be in mole. And then if we use this SI units or this conversions, and then the value of R that we have to use is 0.082. And then this is the temperature it must be in kelvin and then we know very well that to convert from degree celsius to kelvin we just need to add um the value that we have in degree celsius we add it with 273 it will give us the value in kelvins now let us get to partial pressure equation which was derived by delta. Now for partial pressure, this is the equation that you should know. The total pressure we have in a container is equal to partial pressure of the first gas plus partial pressure of the second gas plus partial pressure of the third gas and so forth. So suppose we have a container and then we put different types of gases inside this container. 
and then we close the container. In order to get the total pressure of this particular container, we are going to take the pressure of the first gas plus the pressure of the second gas plus the pressure of the third gas. And then these gases, we call them partial pressures. So partial pressure of the first gas will be this P1 equals to P total minus P2 minus P3. And then we should also bear in mind that we said the ideal gas law is like this. So if you solve for this P, we divide by V both sides. We are going to get P is equals to NRT over V. And then we can further expand this equation to say that P total is equals to NR. T over V plus NRT over V plus NRT over V. Then remember that we said this number of moles is this one. So we can go ahead and expand further by substituting M over M onto this M. So it depends on the nature of the question. If you're given the number of moles and then you're given other information and then you are required to calculate the total pressure of the container, then we can expand. But if you are given the values of the pressures, we can simply take the sum of them and then we are going to get the total pressure. Sometimes you'll be given the total pressure and then the question asks, that you must calculate the partial pressure of um, a particular gas. And then this equation, you must use it, you substitute, and then you solve for that unknown that you're looking for. So this is the equation that you should be familiar with. So these are the important equation that you should know when it comes to partial pressure. Let us move to the next concept, which is mole fraction. There is a relationship between mole fraction and partial pressure. Now, when you talk about mole fraction, think about this equation. I will use n mole to represent mole fraction. Your test book, your study guide might use a different way to write this, but the equation will be the same. Number of mole of a substance. This is the number of moles of a substance that you you need to calculate its mole fraction over the number of moles, the total number of moles that we have. Or we can use this x component, let's say x mole, or let's say x n equals to number of mole of that particular n over number of mole total. So this is the equation that we are going to use for mole fraction. Suppose we have a container, then we put different types of gases. And then we want, okay, let's say this is one, two, and three. We want the mole fraction of gas number one. What you're going to do, we need to find the sum of the number of moles for all these gases. Then we are going to take this equation. Number of mole of that desired gas equals to the number of mole of this one over the sum of all the number of moles. Then we are going to get the mole fraction of that particular gas. 
Another equation that we can use, we can use x component is equals to n component over n total. Component stands for that particular guess that you're looking for. In the next lesson video, we'll be looking at different types of examples, how to apply these equations. So this one, we just go through the equations just to know them. Then this is measured in mole. This is also measured in mole. This is also measured in mole. We call this a mole fraction. There is another equation that we can use to calculate mole fraction. If we know the partial pressure of that component over the total pressure, then this, I mean the pressure of the component divided by the total pressure, it gives you the, the mole fraction of that particular component. So having this equation, let's say you are required to calculate the partial pressure of a particular gas and then you have the mole fraction, you have the total pressure, then you can use this equation. X component multiplied by the total pressure. So for this lesson video, I just hope you were compiling notes, preparing for the next lesson video. The next lesson video will be looking at examples on how to answer these um, questions based on these equations or this concept. Just make sure that once I display a question, you pause the video, you work out the question, play the video to verify the answer. Well, that's it for this lesson video. This is Wahula SJ. Thank you very much.